once again I return to the history of the Russian automobile industry. This time we will talk about RAF 977, the Special Purpose Garage Museum, which is located in Moscow, hosted an exhibition on the history of Soviet and Russian medical equipment which featured ambulances used in the Soviet Union from different times, including medical variations of government limousines Tim, Cheka and Zil. But this video is not about them, but about a completely different ambulance. I will talk about the first real ambulance in the history of Russian medicine. This honorary title rightfully belongs to the RAF 977 car. More precisely, its modifications RAF 977i. Why? because it really was the first car in which it was possible not only to take a patient to the hospital, but also to provide him with medical care on the way, which in some situations is critically important. In fact, all modern ambulances operating in Russian hospitals are direct descendants of the same RAF 977i, which in this capacity older people even saw at work, and young people should also remember and know, since the RAF 977 was used as a medical vehicle in many Soviet films. How were patients taken to the hospital in the Soviet Union before the advent of the RAF 977, that is, until the early 1960s? For this purpose two types of cars were used. The first type is all kinds of conversions of light production trucks. For example, such a medical vehicle, built on the basis of the mass-produced Gazelle light truck, was filmed in the very popular Soviet film Prisoner of the Caucasus. The second type is slightly modified production passenger cars. For example, the innovative Po Beta car, mass produced in the late 1940s and early 1950s. In the medical version of this car, a patient on a stretcher was brought into the cabin through a standard luggage hatch which looked a little strange from the outside. In such a car, of course, it did not shake while driving, like in a truck, but the doctor simply drove, sitting next to the patient, and could not provide medical assistance to the patient on the road. When the gas plant began producing the Volta passenger car in the late 1950s, following the sedan, a modification with a station wagon body was launched into mass production. The station wagon had a large and convenient tailgate. Therefore, loading a patient into a Volga car has become much easier and more convenient. But this car also did not solve the problem of medical assistance on the road. The solution to this problem became possible only with the advent of a new class of cars in the country, which were called minibuses. And the first of them, RAF 977, entered the production line of a plant in Latvia in 1962. And almost immediately this plant began producing its medical modification, the RAF 977i, the retrofitting of which was carried out in one of the workshops of the same plant. Let's see what the first Soviet real ambulance turned out like. We open the right front door of the cabin, and the first difference is a radio station with a telephone handset for communication with the dispatcher, through which it was possible, for example, to get the address of the next patient or inform the hospital that a new patient is coming to them. Since the engine of the RAF 977 was located at the front, a massive engine compartment cover appeared between the driver and passenger. The steering wheel is from a Volga car, and the instrument panel is from a Moskvich car. As you can see, the cabin is separated by a solid partition with a window through which the medical salon is clearly visible. This salon, as we see, is spacious enough for the doctor to approach the patient from any direction. But nevertheless, it is better to look at the medical compartment from a different angle. Open the second side door. Here, one seat is located against the direction of travel, and two more are located in the direction of travel on both sides of the stretcher. That is, both the doctor and one of the patient's relatives could travel in the cabin with the patient. The stretchers don't just stand on the floor, they stand on a special loading device. To the left of them there is furniture where medical drugs and equipment could be stored. By today's standards, the interior looks primitive and ascetic. But compared to what happened before, this is just a huge step forward. Now let's take a look at the rear of the cabin. It is especially clear here that you can approach the stretcher from any direction. Moreover, almost without bending down. The floor height of the RAF 977 is significantly greater than that of any passenger car. Please note, 
the second stretcher is located at the top left. In various descriptions of this car you can read that with their help it was possible to transport another patient by installing a stretcher in two tiers. But that's not true. Because inside the body there are no fastenings for installing a stretcher on the second tier. The loop on the ceiling, which is clearly visible in the photograph, is most likely intended so that the doctor can hold onto it when assisting a patient while moving. Therefore, the second stretcher was most likely used as a reserve. For example, at the scene of a traffic accident where there are many victims, some of them could be placed on such a stretcher for a while so that the victim would not wait for an ambulance lying on the asphalt or in the snow. The production of the medical RAF 977 was completed simultaneously with the completion of the production of the basic minibus. In 1976, a new plant was built in the Latvian city of Jelgava, where the production of the next generation RAF minibuses was launched. And along with them, new ambulances, which received the designation RAF 22031. The life of these cars turned out to be surprisingly long. The plant produced them for 30 years until its final bankruptcy in the mid-1990s.